Today I'm going to show you how to effectively use the sharpening and noise reduction functions in Lightroom. When you sharpen and add noise reduction to your images in Lightroom, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. One will enhance how your image looks and the other will degrade it. And the art to sharpening your image correctly is in the subtlety of using the tools you have at your disposal. When you set your camera to shoot in JPEG mode, it will add some kind of sharpening and noise reduction in camera. Depending on how you have your settings in the creative modes or whatever they're called in your camera, most of the time it will do this globally. So everything will be affected. This is not great and it's another good reason to shoot in RAW. One of the downsides to shooting in RAW is that you have a lot more to learn and adding sharpness and noise reduction is definitely just a couple of more steps that you do need to learn. But this is the only way you're really gonna get better and the only way that you're gonna get that really nice look to your images and not the harsh look that you can sometimes get from your camera. What you will find is when you first start editing in RAW, the images will look really flat and they'll look worse than the JPEGs. But if you stick to it and start learning each of these skills one by one, then before you know it, you'll end up having much better looking images. But it's a case of sticking to it and really learning the program well so you can use all of the tools to get much better images. The process of sharpening adds contrast to edges, making them stand out more. However, if you push this too far, it can look very strange. In Lightroom, 99% of the editing happens in the Develop module. On the right-hand side, if you open up the drop-down menu, Detail, this is where some of the sharpening will happen. In the Sharpening panel, you have Amount, Radius, Detail and Masking. As standard, Lightroom will put the sharpening amount to 25, and this is sharpening absolutely everything. So we want to change a few settings so it's only sharpening the things we want to apply this effect to. So the first slider is the amount of sharpening that will be placed on your image. If I slide it back and forth, I can show you what the difference is between the maximum and the minimum. And this is actually a really good tip. Whenever you're in a program that has these sliders and you're not sure what they do to your image, just slide them to the maximum and then slide them to the minimum. And then you should be able to see what they do. If I zoom in one to one, you can see the noise being sharpened in the background, as well as that soft background bokeh that you really don't need to sharpen. So we need to know what these other sliders do so we can really focus in and just sharpen the things that we want sharpened. The radius slider will change how this amount of sharpening affects your edges. The higher the radius amount, the further away from the edges the sharpening effect will occur. The smaller the radius, the more subtle the sharpening will be. So say for a portrait, you might want to drop the radius down a little, whereas in say a cityscape, you might want to bump it up and make it a bit more, say crispy. Again, this is all down to personal preference, but just remember, Subtlety is the key here. The detail slider just tunes this sharpening in even more. It's a bit like a fine tuning slider that really hones in where you want it to be. With these three sliders, radius, detail and masking, if you hold down the option or alt key when using them, you'll be shown a mask and this will help you see what you are changing. With radius and detail, it will show you a high frequency mask, which will basically highlight the edges. With the mask slider, it will show you a black and white mask. Now, even though the masking slider is at the bottom of this panel, I'd say it's one of the most important sliders in this panel to get good sharpening. So to start with, keep the top three sliders where they are. Hold down the option or alt key and then move the masking slider. This will show you the mask. If you're not sure what a mask is, Basically, it's an overlay where everything that is white will be affected and everything which is black won't be affected. Anything in between black and white will have varying degrees of change. The closer the color is to white, the more of an effect it will have on that part of the image. So if I hold down Option and slide the mask all the way to the left, it will be completely white. So this will sharpen everything from the noise to the background out of focus parts right through to the sharp edges. Absolutely everything gets sharpened. 
If you slide it all the way to the right, you'll start to see that the mask will pick out the edges. And this is what we want. With holding Option or Alt down, you can see the edges stay white and the parts that just blend into the background tend to turn black. If you remember, the white bits keep the effect on and the black bits remove this effect. Now, where you place this slider is up to you. And once again, it comes down to your judgment as to how much sharpening you actually want. I normally have it anywhere between 50 and 70, depending on the image that I'm working on. Although sometimes I'll go above this and other times I'll go a little bit below. This might be different for you and the image that you're working on. So you need to play around with this, but it's really important to know about this masking slider. So just to show you how the amount and mask sliders work together, I'll zoom in one to one and change the amount from zero to 100. You can see it really sharpens up everything when the mask is on zero. If I have the mask on, let's say 50 to 70, you can see it only sharpens up the harder edges and this is what we want. But obviously 100 on the amount is a little bit too much. So I'll just bring it back to around about 60. You don't wanna push it much over 60 because this is when that haloing really starts to take effect. Then I'll work on my radius slider and this will hone in that sharpening effect. I only ever move the radius slider by around about 0.2 to 0.4 one way or the other. But this is my personal preference. Then with the detail slider, I will hone this in even more. Again, I'll only make a very subtle change with this slider but you can play around with any of these sliders until you get it exactly where you want it to be. If you get lost at all, or if you're not sure what you need to change to make the image better, all you need to do is double click on any of the names of the sliders and they will reset to what they were originally. So to recap, the main changes I make are bumping up the sharpening amount to around about 40 to 60 and then I'll bring my mask slider up to around about 40 to 60 as well. Then I'll just tune it in even more with the radius slider and then maybe the detail slider a little bit as well. Another way you can add sharpening to your image is by using the local adjustments and they are these three here. So you have your graduated filter, your radial filter and your adjustment brush. If you click on any of these, you'll get an extra drop down menu and you can see sharpness in this menu. If you slide it to the right, you'll get more sharpening. If you slide it to the left, you'll get less sharpening. You'll basically add a gradient filter or a radial filter to the area that you want, or use the adjustment brush to brush the area that you want to change. And then you go down to the sharpness slider and change that by changing this sharpness slider in this drop-down menu and then painting the mask on the part that you want to change. Just be very careful with this setting as it doesn't have the refined sliders that you'll find in the detail panel. With the adjustment brush, this is a really good way to add sharpening and you can decide exactly what you want to sharpen. If you brush in too much, you can hold down Option or Alt to delete this local area you've painted in. It will put a minus on the brush and then you can delete the parts that you've painted in. To see the area you've painted in, Click on this checkbox at the bottom. This will show you your mask in red. And if the red is too distracting, just click on that checkbox again and the red will disappear, but the mask will still be there. And as I've said throughout this tutorial, always remember the key to Lightroom is being subtle with your sliders. There is a third way you can add sharpening and that's on export. I rarely use this and would advise against it, because it adds a global sharpening to the whole of your image. So if you have any noise in your image or anything you want to blend into the shadows, it will add sharpening to all of this. So I'd advise to mainly focus on the detail panel in the develop module and then the adjustment brush. Next, we're gonna move on to noise reduction. Noise reduction is where Lightroom actually blends the pixels together a little bit, or just gives this appearance. So there is a smoother transition between them. This reduces the noise patterns to the areas that it's applied to, but also reduces the sharpened look to that area. So you have to be very selective with noise reduction. When it comes to noise reduction, again, you're going to do some of this in the detail panel, and some of it with the adjustment brush. What you'll find is if you look at most of your images where you have lots of detail and sharpness, this will tend to hide the noise so you won't actually see it in those areas as much. Whereas in the areas where you've got a similar color 
or it's a darker color, or it might be out of focus a little bit, this is where you'll really notice the noise, especially when shooting with high ISO levels. There are basically two different types of noise that you'll find. The first is color noise, where you'll see pixels that are just slightly more green, more red or more blue. And then you'll get more digital noise, which does look a little bit like film grain, especially when you remove that color noise. This is unless it's really big and pixelated, then it really does look like digital noise. They're not mutually exclusive, but in knowing about these two different types of noise, you can change your settings to suit. First of all, I'll see if I can reduce the color noise, like in this image here, I'll go down to my detail panel and I'll change the color noise reduction slider. I won't ever really push it above 20, so again, this is a subtle change. But you can see if I zoom in one to one how it changes the noise in this image without any of this color noise reduction. You can see these pixels are really standing out. But if I slide it a little bit more to the right, you can see it starts to blend in these colors together. The noise pattern is still there, but the colors have been removed. And if I zoom out, the image looks a lot cleaner. To remove some of the digital noise, if I'm in a rush, I'll add it here in the detail panel. But like the color noise slider, I won't ever take it above 20. If I have a bit more time, I won't do any of this in the detail panel. Instead, I'll go up to my adjustment brush, select a new brush, reset any of the other settings that I have prior adjustments on, and then I'll set the noise to 100 in that drop down panel. Then I'll change it to a big brush. I'll switch auto mask off and I'll have my feather flow and density to 100. I will then start to paint in the areas where I want to reduce this noise. The great thing with the adjustment brush is that you can add it to wherever you want. If you paint over some areas where you don't actually want this change to be made, you can then delete it. You do this by holding down Option or Alt and the plus sign in the middle of where your pointer is will turn to a minus and you know it's going to take away from that mask you've painted in. Then wherever you click your mouse, you will start to delete that mask from that area. To change the size or the edge feather, make sure you keep the Option or Alt button pressed and change the sliders in the panel on the side. To see where the mask is, you can click Show Selected Mask Overlay on the checkbox down the bottom here. And this will show where you've painted on the mask and it'll show you in red. Once you've painted all of the areas you want to reduce that noise in with the adjustment brush, you need to change the noise slider to suit because obviously 100 will make that part of the image look quite strange. So start by bringing the noise slider down until you get it to where you want it. If you zoom in one to one on the area that you worked on, you'll be able to see more clearly the change in the noise pattern. Now you can spend hours on tuning these two settings. However, when most other people will be looking at the image, they will only be critical of these two things. If you've over sharpened it and you can see that halo around the contrasting edges, or if there's really horrible noise and it's really clear to see when you're looking at the image as a whole. And that's about it. The amount of noise and sharpness that you add to an image or take away from that image is ultimately up to you. You can spend hours really refining it, or you can just add a little bit and move on. Different people have different tolerances to noise and sharpness. I remember shooting film a long time ago and we would never really take it much above ISO 400. So now that we have the ability to go into the tens of thousands in the ISO levels and still have relatively clean images, and because of this, my tolerances to noise in my images are quite low. The only thing I always try and get rid of is that color noise, which really does look like digital noise. And it's a real big indicator that there is noise in the image. But how you perceive noise and how much you want to remove is ultimately up to you with your photographs. Now let me know in the comments below how you've got on with sharpening and noise reduction and how you've been able to remove it in Lightroom or your editing software of choice. It'll be great to hear how you guys get on reducing the noise and increasing that sharpness. Also, if you have any other ways that you get rid of noise or increase that sharpness in Lightroom that I haven't already mentioned, again, let me know in the comments below. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next one.